Hi everybody, Arkandy here. Today I'm going to show you a fail-proof setup for one of the more elusive tricks in the game, the ledge warp. For those who don't know, just a quick note, ledge warp is a frame-perfect trick that requires you to morph exactly two frames before mantling on a ledge. If you do that correctly, unmorphing in the air while facing the same direction you had when attempting to mantle will cause Samus to warp to that ledge. But how do you know you store the ledge warp? And what if you don't warp and end up wasting time? These questions are some of the reasons why ledge warping doesn't see a lot of intentional use. Don't be intimidated by that though. With the correct setup, ledge warping is actually super easy. Let's go straight into how this is done. The first setup works specifically with ledges that are 4 tiles high. It doesn't matter if it is a wall or a platform. You need to find a 4 tile ledge. Spin jump towards the ledge and hold B to do a full jump. Note how you're guaranteed to mantle when doing this. Right after jumping, let go of the left stick and leave it neutral. Do this as soon as possible after jumping. Then try to morph for the ledge warp before mantling. The goal here is to morph while holding B during the spin jump and neutral stick. If you do this correctly, there are four possible outcomes. If you try to morph too late, you get mantled. Didn't get the ledge warp. If you morph one frame before mantling, you get a space ball. Once again, no ledge warp. If you morph but don't get the ledge warp, Samus will go up and then fall to the ground. If you morph and successfully get the ledge warp, Samus will go forward and land on the ledge. This is the only time morphing before space ball lets Samus land on the ledge. See? It'll be obvious if you did the setup correctly. This trick continues to be frame perfect, but your movement and timing are always the same so it can be very consistent. The neutral stick is not absolutely necessary, but it makes it much easier to distinguish failed from successful attempts. We can also take this setup to underwater platforms before acquiring the gravity suit. Instead of 4 tiles, however, we would use ledges 2 tiles high. The setup for the underwater ledge warp is basically the same as the previous setup. Find a 2 tile ledge, spin jump towards the platform while holding B for a full jump, release the left stick to neutral right after jumping, Try to store the ledge warp. The outcomes for the underwater ledge warp are slightly harder to tell apart, but distinct enough that this still works. If you get a mantle or space ball, then, of course, you did not store the ledge warp. If you morph but don't get the ledge store, Samus will hit the corner of the ledge and fall quickly. If you morph but do get the ledge store, Samus will land on the corner of the platform for a moment before sliding off. The difference between getting the ledge warp or morphing too early is that extra time Samus spends on the ledge before sliding off. Like the other setup, you can use a wall or a platform. You can do this even if the water surface is at two tiles as well, in which case the successes and failures may look even more alike. The next setup is for one tile ledges. Unfortunately, the previous setups cannot be adapted to work with one tile ledges since Samus jumps a minimum of two tiles. Instead, we need to focus on landing from above. There are actually a few ways you can possibly do this, but the one I found most reliable is as follows. Climb the ledge without taking any extra steps. You can do this by first approaching the ledge. Samus will do a slow climb. You can also slide to the ledge before climbing. Do a full jump away and then back. This guarantees a mantle. Leave the stick neutral during both jumps. You don't want to take extra steps when landing away and you want to stick neutral for the next step. Which is to try to morph for the ledge warp. Two things to note for consistency. Make sure to let the game do the climb for you without taking any extra steps and allow Samus to complete the mantling animation before jumping. Do let go of the left stick when you see Samus mantling. On top of that, be quick on your spin jump inputs. You don't want Samus to take any steps or move too much outside of the spin jump. These two things will have a slight impact on the outcomes. By now, I'm sure you know mantling or space balling means you didn't get the ledge warp storage, so let's focus on the correct timing versus the early morphs. If you morph too early, Samus will have a smooth landing and go forward a bit. If you morphed at the right timing, Samus will land on the ledge for a bit and then slide down. 
The amount of time Samus stays at the ledge varies with the things I noted earlier. The less you move during the setup, the longer Samus stays on the ledge before sliding. Make sure to redo the setup in full if you messed up. There are many subtleties with different ways to climb the ledge and how that affects the outcomes, but I will not get into that. Not every one tile ledge will have lots of room like this one. In other places you may have to get creative with head bonks and adapt the setup to make things work. Just for completeness, underwater one tile ledge warps are possible too, though there are only a handful of those in the game. The setup is practically the same as the out of water setup, except you should press L for free aim after fully climbing the ledge to make Samus reposition, which makes the mantling more consistent. The outcomes are pretty much the same as well. Once again, consistency is important as your jumps and exact positioning can slightly change them. What about 2 and 3 tile ledges? Those are tricky. You can adapt the 4 tile setup for 2 and 3 tile ledges. For 2 tiles, you would have to just tap B for a minimum jump to make Samus mantle. And for 3 tile ledges, you'd have to hold down B for a moment to get the mantle. Either way, these will depend on your ability and judgment to hold down B for the correct amount of time. Not to mention, some of the early morph timings now look similar to the correct timing. It's also possible to adapt the one tile setup, although each requires completely different setups using various movement abilities and they're not necessarily reliable or consistent. What about 5 tiles or higher? These are too high to mantle from below in a single jump, but there are still other ways you can do this. One, you'll have to spin jump away from the ledge and back into it to get Samus to mantle. There is currently no easy setup for this. Or, you can adapt the 4 tile ledge setup with spin boost or space jump. It may take you a bit of practice to figure out the sweet spot where you want to jump to guarantee the mantle. The outcomes can also be more similar just like 2 and 3 tile ledges. Some places might actually have the perfect height, in this case 10 tiles, to do a full space jump from below. What about breakable blocks? Not much to say here, you can indeed store ledge warps on breakable blocks as normal. You can also warp back to them while they're broken. Even the mushrooms in Gavrun can be warped too. Now that you know how to get the ledge warp correctly, the sky's the limit. There are probably loads of ways to ledge warp and do the craziest things you could imagine. Normally, I would show different ways to use ledge warp in speedruns, but the thing is, currently there are very few places where ledge warping actually saves time or is even useful in any way. Perhaps, as of the release of this video, that will change. Still, speed isn't everything. Ledge warping is pretty fun to do regardless of time saves. There's only so much one can fit into a single video. I've put a lot of effort into experimenting with ledge warps to figure out these setups, but I'm sure there's yet more to be found. To end this video, I'll show you a useful ledge warp for the old boss's unrestricted category. That will be it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you like my content. Enjoy the free ledge warps, and I'll see you on the next one.